Hello and welcome back to episode 6 of the How to Make Any Game Mechanics series. We are back onto our Random Picker website featuring additional suggestions. I wonder what mechanic we're making today. As a reminder, if anyone comments a suggestion on any video of the series, I will add it to the list, so long as it's actually achievable. With that being said, let's spin the Wheel of Pain. What are we going to get? Character customization. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. So this suggestion comes from Galaxond. I think that's how you pronounce it. And this is over on the Discord server. And his suggestion is how about character customization? That's always something nice to have in a game. Well, I completely agree with you. This will probably be a really fun one. Um, so I'm gonna have to cut things here and make a whole bunch of sprites. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, I've now made some character sprites. I have created a new folder called episode 6 and a new scene called episode 6. And then I open that up. So we just have a blank scene here. And I'm going to import my character sprites from my other monitor over here. So let's import those character sprites. And I am just going to change some settings here. So I made this in 32 by 32. So I'm just going to say 32 here and none and point no filter. And this is all pixel by the way, uh, and multiple. And then I'm just going to slice these sprites up and I made them all in 32 by 32. Okay. So now everything's all spliced up all nicely and let's zoom that out. Okay. So character customization is just one of those things that are like super subjective. There's like a bunch of different ways that you could go about doing it. Personally, with pixel art, it gets to be a little bit difficult because you are working with literal pixels that have to be perfect. So typically how we would do some sort of character customization is we would have a base character and then we would start overlaying those customizable parts on top. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing in this video. The main thing to consider is animations. I didn't end up creating any animations, but things would get very complicated very quickly. There might be some secret Unity way to fix this problem, but I haven't heard of it. So <laughs> let's go on and let's get our character all customized. So I'm just going to create an empty and I'm going to call it player. I don't know why the transforms messed up, so we're just going to reset that. Okay, so now we can actually start importing the sprites. Uh, I have taken the liberty of creating a default sprite, so I'm just going to throw that in. And we can just call this something like character base. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in on our character base here. And we can actually duplicate this because I made all of these sprites in a way where they will overlay the player perfectly. It's just how I created the sprites, so things will be quite a bit easier. So I'm just going to right click on the character base and create another empty. Let's call it eyes. And in here, we would have all of our eyes as children of our main eyes object. So I'm just going to drag that in now. And you can see that they are not where the eyes are. So let's put it under our eyes and reset the transform. And you'll see they snap somewhat in place. I'm just going to duplicate these a few more times for our, all of our eyes down here. And I'm just going to replace them. It might be a good thing to set up some layers now. So let's click on the character and let's create a layer. And let's call it layer. And this will just keep everything nice and organized. And we can call this one eyes. I don't know, probably hair. We can drag this up. What else we have? Well, we can just leave clothes as its own. So let's click on our character base and assign that to player. And click on all of our eyes and assign them to eyes. So you'll notice that once I start disabling these, now we have a blue one, which is this one. Disable that, and now we have just some black eyes here. 
and we'll go about cycling through all these in code in just a little while. Let's set up the rest of our player. So let's create another empty. And let's call it pair. And again, we can drag this in here and make sure we reset it and put it on the hair layer. And we can go about duplicating the hair. I have three variations. And then let's disable them all. And I only have one coat, one pants, one shoe. So, so it's the same process. It's just we're only going to have one option. Coat, pants, shoe. And I'm just going to drag those on there. And it's in the clothes layer. And the clothes layer. And you can kind of see how that works. And I'm just going to disable all of those. Okay. So I think the main thing now is to set up some sort of a canvas. So let's right click, create UI, and I'm actually just going to create a button with Text Mesh Pro. And we can select our canvas here, and I'm going to put the camera, and the main camera is the render camera. Okay, and that just lines everything up for us. And let's call this, uh, I don't know, we can start with the, Eyes, okay. Eyes. Yeah, sure. And let's move this up here. We have something kind of nice in our scene view. We can make this bigger. We're definitely gonna have to make our player bigger. <laughs> Just realizing that now. Um, let's call this eyes. And then we're going to duplicate these for the hair and for the rest of it. I'm just going to skip ahead here so you don't have to watch me do that. Okay, and now all my buttons are now created. So let's just scale this player up a little bit. He's pretty small. Something like that. And we can see him just fine. Okay, now for the actual code. I'm just going to come down into our project window and create a C Sharp script and call it character customization okay let's open that up with vs code okay in vs code we're going to do some things that might make a few people angry <laughs> uh, we're just going to use some serialized fields to our advantage and create a public function that our buttons can access so let's create a serialized field and you'll see just in a moment we will make it a private and we might as well use a transform and let's call it I options. And then for the little trick here, let's come over to our transform and make it into an array. Okay, so now we're just going to create arrays for all of our options. So eyes, hair, I think it's like coat, pants, shoe, something like that. So let's make all of those now. It's just the same thing. Private transform and the two square brackets and let's call it hair options and another serialized field and a private transform two square brackets and coat options and yet another serialized field a private transform two square brackets and pants options oh yeah and we have the shoes finally driver transform shoe options and now we need ints for every single one of those which will keep track internally what exact option we are currently on so we will make a private int 
I selected private and hair selected, private and coat selected, private and pants selected. Private int shoe selected. Okay, let's remove our start and update here and let's create a public void change I selection. And inside we're going to say I selected plus plus. And then I options, I selected a game object dot set active, and we'll make it true. In the same function, we're going to make a for loop, and we're going to say I options dot length, and we're going to disable every single one of them. And we should put this for loop above the code we just wrote. So when we change the eyes, we disable all of the eyes, and then we only enable the one that we selected. Okay, perfect. But there is one problem. What happens when we get to the end of the eye options? Well, we should make it go back to the first option. So we're going to have to put an if statement in here and make sure that we're not adding it every single time. So if I selected plus one is greater than I options dot length. I selected is equal to zero. Otherwise, that's when we add. Hopefully that makes sense. And basically we're just gonna do the exact same thing for every single one of these. So I'm just gonna copy and paste these and fill them all out. So let's time lapse that. Okay, I think that is everything. So let's go back into Unity and try this out. Okay, back in Unity, let's click on our canvas and let's just add it to the canvas itself. It's kind of my own practice that I like to add the UI to the canvas and rather than to the player. So let's put this on here and you'll see that we have zero for everything. So what I'm going to do to make things easier is just lock our inspector. And that just makes sure that when I click on other things that I don't lose my little window here. So let's minimize the canvas and go to the eyes and I can select these three and drag them in. I can select the hair and just drag them in. I can select the coat and drag it in and the pants and the shoe. And everything should work. We just have to click on our buttons and run that function. So let's click on the eyes button, scroll down on click, drag our canvas in, vector customization and eye selection. And let's do that for the hair, coat, pants and shoe button. Okay, with all of our functions now added, let's hit play and start clicking on some of these buttons. So we don't have any errors and let's click on the eyes button. And now we have a different set of eyes. And oh no, unfortunately I got an error. Let's uncheck play and look inside VS code. Okay, in VS code, I just realized I forgot to add an equal sign here. And that means I didn't add it here or here or here or here. And now if we save that up, we can go back into Unity and test it out. Back in Unity, let's hit play. And let's see if we can cycle through the eyes. And we can, we have our three eye options here. And I'm definitely gonna leave that little mistake in just to show you guys that it happens even to me too. 
So if I hit my hair button, we have different hair options. And if I hit my coat and my pants and my shoes, you can see we are all dripped out. Okay, perfect. So where would you go from here? Well, unfortunately it's all internal, but inside our character customization, we have a reference to everything that we have selected. It's this private int hair, eye, coat, pants, shoes. It's these variables here. They're all storing a value on exactly which ones you have selected. So when you're transferring through scenes, or if you save it out in something like a JSON or even a scriptable object, you would have that information and you can make sure to update the player's appearance every single time. But that's all the time we have for this episode. As always, you guys can leave a suggestion in the comments below for what game mechanic you want to see next. I'll see you guys next week.